probability, we try to count up all the ways that something can happen and divide it by all of the total possible outcomes. So all the ways that we could get a bullseye divided by all the ways that we could hit the target in general. Except for when we're talking about that kind of a thing, there's an infinite number of ways we can hit the bullseye. We can hit it here, here, in the middle, in the middle of that, in the middle of that, just keep splitting it in half, and we'll never get all of the ways that we can hit the bullseye. So what we do is we compare instead how much there is to hit in the bullseye, like what's the area of the bullseye versus what's the area of the whole thing. So in, in that way, by comparing the areas, we do the same thing. It's like how much opportunity do I have to get the bullseye versus how much opportunity do I have to hit the, the target, the whole target. And to figure that out, let's look here. This diameter is 80 centimeters. And this diameter of the bullseye is 16 centimeters. So we take the area of the bullseye over the area of the whole target. There we go. We'll have a probability. We'll have a comparison of how much opportunity we have to hit the thing we want to hit versus how much opportunity we have to do anything, which is hit the target anywhere. So how do you find the area of circles? Pi times radius squared. Pi r squared. What's the radius of the bullseye? Eight. It's eight, it's half the diameter. Pi times eight squared. And the diameter, or the radius of the entire target? 40. 40 squared. The pi's cancel each other out. You get 64 over 1,600. Fire the target randomly, she expects to be somewhere one, one out of 25 times. You hit the bullseye just by chance, just randomly. So that's what we call a geometric probability. Other questions? Other questions are ready to go, ready to show me that you can do it on your own? All face cards. 52 minus 12. So we'll take that away from 52, and it'll be out of what? 52. 52 minus 12 is what? 40. 40 out of 52. Oh, 10 out of what? Also, the ratio in the single suit, how many cards are not face cards to how many cards are, uh, well, just cards. This also uh, kind of hits on the idea of a, uh, of a complement. Basically, we've, we've taken the complement, which would be to get a face card, we've subtracted it from the total, and that's a whole lot easier than counting up all the cards that aren't face cards. So easier to say that there's three in a suit, four suits, 12 face cards, take that away from 52, then to say, okay, we got ace, and then two, so up to 10, multiply by four, 40, right? So, 
however you look at it. Um, using the compliment, it might be a little bit easier to you, just depending on your opinion. Okay, so here we're talking about experimental probability, meaning that we actually run an experiment that we have been saying we've planned probability of, but we've been doing it theoretically. Theoretically, there are six faces to a die, and the probability of getting any one of those faces is going to be one out of six. So we're seeing, does that match up to the actual experiment? So what's the experimental probability of rolling a prime number and reminding you that one is not a prime number, prime numbers start at two. So which numbers are prime numbers then first? Three, two, three, five. So three of them. So what's the experimental probability of rolling a prime number? That would be theoretical. Experimental means based on the experiment that was run. So wait, how'd you get 67? 22 plus 18 plus 27 is 67 out of 150. Simplify if we can. Can we simplify? Uh, so that answers the question, 67 out of 150, that's what it is. But what's the theoretical? Theoretically, it would be one half. How does this compare? Like out of 150 rolls, how many rolls should be prime numbers if theoretically it's one half? 75. 75 should come out to be prime numbers. It's close. It's off by, uh, it's off by eight. So that could be significant in 150 rolls. Um, so if I were to continue this experiment, I might keep an eye on that. Start to look at uh, the prime numbers. Do they get closer to being half of the total rolls, or do they continually stay behind that? Do they trail behind one half significantly? Uh, and if they do continue to trail behind like this, we might conclude that uh, it's not a fair die. Something to keep your eye on. Any questions? It's scored out of eight, and I'll come around. Okay. Now, what's the probability of getting a heads or a tails? You know, either one. What? Two out of two. Two out of two. Yeah. There's, only, there's two possibilities: uh, heads or tails. We happen to have captured all of them, all two of them, and there's only two possible outcomes all, all the way around. So those would be uh, our half plus our other half would be one, 100%, two out of two. Okay. Let's say we're, um, let's say we are pulling a, a card out of a deck of cards. We could be rolling a die here or Lots of things, that whatever situation involves twos or sixes. What's the probability of getting a two or getting a six in like in one thing, just in, in one draw of a card? In that probability, or how would we find that probability? Do you think? Eight out of fifty-two, because we have four that are twos plus four other ones that are sixes, so you get eight out of 52, or, um, what? Or is two out of 13? So when we say or, we're expanding our horizons, we're improving the likelihood that something is going to go our way. Is probability of two, find probability of six, okay, that's two separate things, but if I allow myself to have a two or a six, either way, I succeed, I win, then I'm gonna just add those probabilities together. Still, even though two things are described, we're talking about one event. I pull a card, that's all that happens, just once, not twice. I am allowed to win if I have a two or a six. Um, Let's think a little outside the box. Instead of K and Q representing king and queen, let's have them represent just 
is K, the letter is K and the letter Q right, from the alphabet. So I just randomly pull a number from the alphabet. What's the probability that I'll pick a K out of the alphabet? Yeah. Plus, what's the probability that I'll pull a Q out of the alphabet? I say or, I'm, you know, we're putting all these probabilities together. We have to be careful about something like this could happen. Um, let's see. I'm talking about a deck, a, a deck of cards here. So what's the probability that we'll get a, a face card or a heart? I'll give you a minute to work on that by yourself. Right. Yeah, but here's the problem. Let's say, like we're just counting the, the kinds of cards you can get, and then we'll just take it out of 52, right? We'll do 52 times. So we just want to count up all the cards that are winners for us, and then take it out of 52. That would be probably good. Right? Does it make sense? So it's to say it that way. Okay, so let's look at face cards. What kinds of cards do we have here? We got Jack. We got a specific though, the Jack of Spades. Mm -hmm. There's a Jack of Spades is in there, and uh, the Queen, the mm -hmm. uh, Diamonds, and uh, another Jack, Jack of Clubs. Right. So there's there's plenty more in that group. So so far, like we're up to three of those things. Let's start to look at the hearts. Which kinds of things are in this circle here? Ace, two, three. So we got all the, just the hearts, right? Ace, uh, two, three, four, and so on of hearts. All of the hearts. But there's some overlap. There are some that are both. Okay. So which ones are both? Jack, Jack the Queen, the King uh, of Hearts. They're both at the same time. Okay. Well, let's see, if we count it like this. We got 12 face cards out of 52, plus we got 13, sorry, we got uh, yeah, 13 hearts out of 52. If we say that equals 25 out of 52, that kind of makes sense, but let's look at this picture and see what we're actually doing. We're counting too much. Right? How many are in this, let's say, orange, let's make it orange. How many are in this orange circle? How many? There's 12, right? We're counting all of the face cards. There's 12 of them. Okay. And we look in uh, this bluish. So we got this kind of pink purple color here. How many are in that circle? 13. But the problem with that is that among the 12, we have some that belong in this little you know, eye-shaped thing. And among the 13, we have some that also belong to that group, right? And basically, we have this thing, this overlap, if we do 12 plus 13, we count it twice. Right? Three of these 12, there's three of them, that are also hearts. There's also three of the hearts that are also face cards. We've added them in there one too many times. Right? So we could either just say, or don't count those when you're counting them up, if you just want to count them one by one by one. And then say, well, I've already counted, say, the Jack, Queen, and King of Hearts, so I won't count them when I'm counting the hearts. Right? That'd be one way to do it. Or once the numbers get a bit too big, we just want to say, well, how much is in the overlap? Really, I want to take away one of these. Because here I have one of them. And by adding 13, I'm adding another one. I have two of those middle pieces, two of the overlap. 
three of these are the Jack Queen King of Hearts. Three of these are also the Jack Queen King of Hearts. So we don't want to count those twice. We'll just take away those three. And now we fix it. Now it's 22, or 11 out of 26. So we can take the probability of getting a face card, plus the probability of getting a heart. Then we want to take away the probability of what? Getting a card that is what? Probability that we get what kind of card? A hard face. Okay, one that is both both of those things. A face and a heart. So here is the first time we're talking about the word and in this section. It means different, something different in the next section. So I want to bring it to your attention. And just means one thing is both a face and a hard card. Describing that this one event has two things that are true about it at the same time. If we pull the, the queen of hearts, we have a card that's a face card and a heart card at the same time. Let's go back this way. Um, what would be the probability? Let, let's go back and, and maybe we have to fix these. What's the probability that you get a king and a queen, meaning a card that is a king and a queen? What's the probability that you get a card like that? Zero. Zero, yeah. That's why we could just add these together, because there is no overlap. If you look at kings and queens, here are kings, here are queens. Completely what we call disjoint. Right? Joint meaning joined together, and dis meaning not that. Not joined together. No overlap. What about... Uh, the probability of getting two and a six. Zero. No, it, when, when you pull a card out of a deck of cards, it's either a two or it's a six. It cannot be both. It can be a face and a heart card. There are cards like that. There are no cards that are twos and sixes. There are cards that are sixes and even, right? There's overlap there. So some events are, they have overlap and some events don't. These ones are disjointed. There's twos, there's sixes, and they don't overlap each other. Heads and tails, you either get a heads or a tails, you can't get a heads and a tails. Okay? I mean, it had to fold over on itself or something, it just wouldn't work. It's not going to happen. But there are things that have overlap, so we need to think, does this event have any overlap? Or is it possible to get both of these things at the same time? This would be a deck of cards again. So we're the probability of getting something that's bigger than a six or a number that's too big. Give that some thought. We could, we could break it down pretty simply. We don't have to bottle our minds with which ones do I count, which ones that I already count. You don't have to count them out. Just look at the probability of each. Probability that a number is, uh, that a card is greater than six. Okay. And by greater than six, I mean the number of cards. So if you pick a king, we wouldn't count that as greater than six, or, or an ace is greater than six. Just strictly seven, eight, nine, and ten, and we'll call it call it good. Um, still a full deck. It's just that if you pull a king, we won't count that as being greater than six. And add the probability of being even, and then we're going to subtract the overlap. Described this well enough uh, so that it was understandable. What's the probability that you get a, a card, a full card? It has to be a number card, at least by my definition, that's greater than six. What's the probability of getting one of those cards? Yes, no. Bigger than six. Bigger than six. Bigger than 16. So there's 79, 10, that's four cards. That happens once in every suit, four suits, 16 out of 52, picking one card, plus what's probability of an even? How likely is it that you're going to an even number? 
20 out of 52. We've got 2, 4, 6, and 8, and 10. So you have 5 in each. So uh, 5 times 4 is 20. And then we have to subtract the overlap. There are 8 cards that are both. That are both bigger than 6 and even. What cards would those be? 8 and 10. In each suit, right? so there's 8 of them. Both. They're bigger than six and they're even. What that means is eight of these are the same as eight of these. So we can look at there's a particular eight cards in this 16 and eight cards in this 20 that are the same cards. Uh, the ten of hearts and the ten of hearts are both groups. Count it twice. We don't want to count it twice. We want to subtract that one away. I mean, to do that eight times because there are eight cards that are exactly the same card. So we get uh, 36 minus 8. That's 28. at this class right now. So we'll try and pick a couple of groups that some of you belong to and uh, some of others belong to another group and maybe there's some overlap. So can you guys think of two groups that, that you might belong to, people in this room that there be some overlap? So let's say we, didn't, uh, we haven't done our due diligence. We haven't looked at the overlap. All I've done is count the people who are in band and the people who are in sports. Right? So then I say, what's the probability that I, I pick one of you at random? There are, there's at least one person who's not in either, right? No, OK. So what's the probability that I pick somebody at random and they are in band or sports? Well, I, I will consider it successful if I pick somebody who's in band or in sports. Even if, if I pick you and you're, you're in sports but you're not in band, that's OK, because you're in sports, and that, that counts. Looks like I have four out of what? So that's possible if everybody's involved in one of those, but if we just say there's somebody, at least one person who's not in either of them, right? So it's not guaranteed that I will pick somebody who's not in one of those. Okay, so what did we forget to do? Take away the overlap. Okay, so let's look at the overlap. That's going to affect. How many people are in both band and sports? One. Is it just one? Okay, just one. Make sure you get it. Look at that. Okay, so the real probability is 11 out of 12, almost guaranteed. So there's one person apparently that's not in either one, right? So you know, really, really good chance that if I pick somebody at random, I'm going to get somebody that's either in band or in sports. But I haven't overcounted by counting Kevin twice. Right? We got a 12 out of 12 because we counted Kevin twice. Kevin is here, he's in band. He's also here though, he's in, he's in sports, but he's also in band, he's in both groups, so we've counted him twice. So we're gonna take him 
out of there once. It means he's still in there. We just took away the extra Kevin that was in there. Right? Um, any questions about that? Does that make sense? Got to think about it. If there's overlap, we got to get rid of that overlap. Take a group of 200 seniors. Say there are 113 high school. who are uh, varsity cool. athletes. There are um, oh, I didn't leave. No, that's right. 113 who are varsity or um, on the honor roll. So they're either one. Um, so there's 74 who are varsity. And there are 51 on the honor roll. So what is the probability of picking a, a senior at random who is varsity and on a roll. Both. Who's in the overlap? Think on that for a second. See what you can come up with. Okay, so if we take the people who are in varsity and the people who are in honor roll and we just add them together, 74 plus 51, what do we get? 125. 125. That seems wrong. Why? Because it should be 113. There's only 130 people in that group, right? If we just add the 74 varsity to the 51 honor roll and expect to get exactly the number of people who are in either one or the other, we would be assuming that none of them are in both. Right? If you just add them together, because there's some in varsity that are also on honor roll, some in honor roll that are also varsity athletes. So, what are we gonna do about that? How do we figure out what that overlap is? Take away 113. If we have this 74 and this slightly smaller 51, some of that 74 is also part of that 51. So we've added 74 and 51. All of this together is 125. But if we take away 113, that's that's the actual number that are in both groups, right? So like that would take away these 74, including that overlap. And then it would only take away like the people who are in the honor roll who are not also in varsity uh, athletics, leaving just the overlap. So that 125 minus uh, 113 comes out to be 12. Uh, so, what's the probability of picking someone who is in both, in varsity and honor roll? Uh, well, out of 200, yeah, because yeah, then we're going to pick it out of the senior class, not just out of the, the people who are in the group uh, either or. So, 12 out of 200 would be the possibility. Okay, now let's look at it from a uh, you know, I have this formula. Let's look at it from that perspective. Probability of varsity or honor roll. We can use this, this formula and always say one thing is B and one thing is H, or we can do A and B, one thing is A, one thing is always B. So in general, if I have the probability of one thing or the other, I can just add up the probabilities of each of them separately. Subtract the probability that I pick 
one of those things that is both at the same time. So you could plug everything in. Like, what's the probability that I'll pick somebody's in varsity or uh, honor roll? Either one. How many people are in either one? 113 out of how many? 200. What's the probability I'll pick somebody at random from the senior class and they are a varsity athlete? 74. 74 out of 200. Plus 51 out of 200. Minus, this was the thing we were looking for. So we can solve for it, just like we would solve for any other variable. Think of it as the big X. Letter X that we're trying to get by itself. And once we figure out what that X is worth, we figure out what the probability is. So we could take, uh, we could subtract 74 over 200 and 51 over 200. Okay. 113 over 200 minus 74 over 200 minus 51 over 200 equals what? What's on the other side now? I've subtracted this from both sides. negative x, or what we're looking for. So whenever I get whatever this is, this will be the negative of what I was looking for. So I'll just change the sign, whatever it is. No surprise, this comes out to be negative 12 over 200. That equals negative probability of b and h. So positive 12 over 200 equals positive probability of b. There's another way to look at it. We just plug in the things that we know in the formula. Like we isolate the thing that we don't know. And in that way, some, you know, there could be possibly a scenario where they tell us what the probability is of getting one or the other, the probability of getting a single one, the probability of getting uh, one that's both, but we'll know what the probability is of getting just on a roll without having told us what that is. Or you can approach it this way, just kind of like a common sense way. How would I figure out how much that overlap is? That would make sense to you. Any questions from that? And by that I mean one event. That could be one thing or the other. It could be one thing and another thing. It could be Brendan Six and Human. It could be Varsity and Honor Roll. Varsity or honor roll. Well, then let's move to the next section, which will be two events happen, one right after the other. Not one event with two possibilities, but two events, one right after the other. Probability. Let's see. There's some questions uh, in the homework about spinning this wheel. Uh, so we're going to ask the probability, what's the probability of getting one color and then another color? Like, what's the probability of getting a, a blue? So 
this is where I want to make you aware that we've used the word and. Okay? But in a totally different context. Before when we said blue and green, it would be like, what's the probability of, of spinning and getting a little slice of the, of the spinner that is blue and it's green? Well, what's the probability of that happening? Yeah. yeah, you can't get a, a spot that is blue and green, right? But what this and means is, is not the same as what it meant in the previous section. This and really means then. It means one thing happens and then the next thing happens. Two things in a row. So what's the probability of getting a blue and then a green? Well, what's the probability of getting a blue first? Let's talk about that. What's that? Three out of 16. Okay. So that's the probability of getting a blue. What's the probability of getting a green? Four. Four, actually. Okay, so we first want to spin a blue, and then we want to spin a green. We know the probabilities of each. Do we just add them together? Why don't we add them together? It's two separate things, and it would be out of 16. So there would be two times it was happening, so then we add 32. Think we add a 32? Okay. So we want one thing to happen and then another. Okay, so maybe you've done this before. Maybe you're familiar with multiplying probabilities together. We would multiply these probabilities together. Okay. So to see why, I'm going to use a little video to help you see why that is. Okay. Basically, we have one thing that will only happen a certain percentage of the time. <coughs> yeah, we can think of it as a percentage. And then a thing after that that will only happen a percentage of that time. Okay. It's kind of like this. Two pairs of sunglasses. What question might you ask about that? What percent tint? What percent tint, or, or a, a similar question: How much light is going to get through those glasses? Okay. So to to see intuitively why we wouldn't add these probabilities together, would it be a hundred percent tint if one is fifty percent and one is another fifty percent? No. 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 It's it's not that I block out half and then the other half with those two fifty percent tints, but. Before you think that sounds too silly, people will walk into a, a, a store that's having a 50% off sale, have a 50% off coupon, and think they get the thing for free. Okay, sounds reasonable if you don't think about it for too very long. Half off, half off, 100% off, I get the thing for free. That sounds like super coupon. Okay, but then what happens if it's a 75% off sale and you have a 75% off? Do they pay you money to take the thing out of the store? No, that doesn't make any sense. So, to see why, well, first of all, to see what the tint would be, or an easier question might be, how much sun will get through? Okay, It's the same question as, what's the probability of getting a blue and then a green? How much light will get through a, fir a first pair of sunglasses and a next pair of sunglasses? Or what's the probability of getting a group blue and then a green? Let's look at that in terms of sunglasses tint. Okay, So we have one pair of sunglasses that is 50% tint. It's almost like if you are a, a ray of light, you have a 50% chance of making it through this pair of sunglasses. Right? It doesn't quite work that way, but it's kind of how you can think of it. And then there's a second of sunglasses, and also only lets 50% of the 
whatever it means. I don't know what that means exactly. Because you said tint, is it? What are they measuring that's now half of what it used to be? It doesn't matter. So let's just think of it as a bunch of light coming in sunglasses. How much of it makes it through? 50% of it. So we're down to you know, cut that in half. All right, so now this, these sunglasses, this is all the light that's coming at the sunglasses, right? Half of what came through the original pair. This is exactly how probabilities work in sequence like that. Only half of the light comes through this pair. How about the second pair? How much of this light makes it through? Half. Well, if I compare this to the original sunlight, how much of this is that? A quarter, right? It's 50% of 50%. It would be half of a half, a quarter, 25%. Right? Half times half. Because what happens is the original light gets cut in half. Okay, this is half. And again, this light's going to get cut in half. Right? There's like a 50% probability that if you're a ray of light, you'll make it through the second pair of sunglasses. Okay. But how much is that? Um, so we get half of the half of the original. What if I put in a third pair of sunglasses? Half of that. So we're going to have half of this half, which is half of that, which is half of that. So we have a half of a half of a half of the original. So now it would be like one eighth of the light is making it through from the original light, right? This is exactly how our probabilities are going to work. We're going to spin, okay? And here is everything that's possible. Just like we were looking at all of the sunlight. Everything that could possibly happen is represented in this rectangle. Now, what part of that is going to be a blue? We're just looking at the first spin. Three. Three out of sixteen. So, well, that's sixteen, and that's uh, eight. That'd be four. So a little bit less than four. Like right there. Right in there is about three out of sixteen. Like here comes everything that could possibly happen, but only three sixteenths of everything that could possibly happen, like makes it through. Or three out of every sixteen is how often we take a second spin. Does that make sense? If we don't get a blue, we don't even take a second spin. It wouldn't make it, it wouldn't be what we want to have happen. We want to take a blue and then a green. So all these other times we're not getting blues. So we're not even taking a second spin. So it's only 3 sixteenths of the time that we go on to the second thing. The second pair of sunglasses. Right? Um, So if this, is a, if this is 16 things that can happen, then that would be down to 8, and this would be down to 4. So 3 would be like right there. So that's 3 sixteenths of everything that's possible. And this would be then how often we go on to the second spin. Now, when you go on to the second spin, the only second spins we take are Three sixteenths of the total time. to take our second spin, but the, the only amount of time that we go on to take a second spin is, is very small. It's 3 sixteenths of the time. So. so we 
you only go on to take that second spin three sixteenths of the time. Now, of that three sixteenths of the time, what what fraction of this will be a green spin? Four sixteenths of it, or one fourth of it. So here's half there. There is a fourth of that because we only go on like a hundred percent of the times that we go on to take a second spin trying to get green. We've already gotten a blue, but that only happened 3 sixteenths of the time from the original everything. So this little guy right here is the only tiny sliver where we get a green, no sorry, blue, and then a green. Because blue only happens 3 sixteenths of the time, and then when we go on to try and get a green, that only happens 1 fourth of the time. So how do we find that total? Well, we've got 1 fourth of 3 sixteenths. One fourth times three sixteenths. So three out of sixty four. What if we extend it a little bit? What if we take the probability of blue and green and, which really means then, then yellow. Blue and green and yellow, meaning blue, then second spin's green, then second, or sorry, third spin is yellow. We've got the blue and then green, and we'll only go on that amount of time to try a third spin. How often does that happen? Yeah, four yellows, 16 total, so four sixteenths. So that'd be one fourth, so one fourth, one tiny little fourth of one tiny little three sixteenths, or one, one fourth of one fourth of three sixteenths. So one fourth of one fourth of three sixteenths. It'd be three out of. Multiply these probabilities together. They're getting small very quickly because we're taking something that is, well, not 100% guaranteed, and then something else after that that's not 100% guaranteed, and something else after that that's not 100% guaranteed. So we keep trying in sequence to uh, see how likely it is that uh, we'll you know, see the sequence of events happen. And actually, Let's do it. Get in! 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 Get in!
So here's the question, why didn't they just show all those trick shots back to back? Why didn't they just stand there and just make all those shots? Uh, yeah, right, so it was, they're good, right? But they're not 100% guaranteed to make those shots. I don't know if anybody was counting, I think I just counted one time when two shots were made back to back. It wasn't too difficult to shot. So the reason is the likelihood that, say, one of the guys from Dude Perfect and then Brody Smith would make two shots in a row is pretty unlikely, even if uh, they were 90% likely. Even to make three in a row, let's see what that would take. What if they were 90% so let's say that any guy from Dude Perfect, any, uh, any shot that Brody Smith takes is 90% likely to happen. Right? Even though they're sort of like down the football field, they could have easily just, the guy throws a basketball in, or he steps in and throws a frisbee into that circular target. But they never did that. They never showed one right back to back, it was always edited together, right? But they did it. So let's say that um, probability of uh, making a shot Nine out of ten, or point nine. Well, how likely is it that they'll make one shot right after the other? Two shots in a row. Probability of shot and the shot. What would that be? What are we going to do to calculate it? First guy takes his shot, that's going to be 90%. Or 
9 out of 10. So the second guy, after that, that less than 100% likely thing happened, he has to come in and make his shot right afterwards. So that's only going to happen 9 tenths of that time. So 9 tenths times 9 tenths equals 81 out of 100. Okay. That's not too bad. Right? What about three shots in a row? Well, then this guy has to come in after this guy who's made it, which only happens 90% of the time, and this guy's made it 90% of that time. He has to come in and he has to make his shot, and he's only 90% likely to make that. The probability of then, then. When we say and in, in this context, we mean then. then, then. So we got 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. That's 0 0.9 to the third. 0.729. And four shots in a row, that's going to be Four shots in a row, that doesn't seem like a lot of shots. It's a small number of four. But to make four in a row is only 66% likely. It's going to happen nearly two thirds of the time. It would get a little frustrating standing around and having to only have that happen two out of three times that four people in a row would make their shots. That's assuming they're that good. You think they're 90% good? Probably not. They're probably better than, than most people in this classroom. Um, but that's all they do. This is how they make their living. They make videos for YouTube on trick shots. That's just what they do. Uh, so they're going to be pretty good. Anybody who practices that much is going to get uh, better than average. Um, let's see if they try to do it four times in a row. Or five, sorry. Okay. Now we're nearly a 50-50 flip of a coin that they're going to be able to do this. And, and if they're waiting and they're having to take the time to do five in a row, it's going to take a long time. So that's why in these trick shot videos, you never see them take just shot after shot after shot because they're not making all those shots. They even showed you at the end how they missed uh, some shots in a, a comical fashion. Um, okay, we do need to go over one more thing. Um, that would be. So we're going to look at what's the probability that a randomly selected student will wear their seatbelt. Okay, well, we don't have exactly that data. We don't have data directly from, uh, you know, collected from students, how many students wear their seatbelts. But we do have some data on um, how likely a student is to wear their seatbelt if the person driving is wearing their seatbelt. Okay, or it's uh, the adult in the seat in the, in the car wearing their seatbelt. Okay, so if they grew up. With somebody, an adult who wears their seatbelt, they're more likely to wear their seatbelt. Okay? So let's say that an adult wears the seatbelt. Then the likelihood that the student is going to wear theirs is. Point six, 66%. There's a 66% chance that the student wears their seatbelt if they observe the adult wearing the seatbelt, right? Yeah. Which means there's a 0.34 chance that they don't. Right? That the student, the student don't? The student doesn't. Well, that's if the adult wears their seatbelt. What if they don't? That changes things, right? Yeah. Okay, so adult doesn't wear the seatbelt. Well now, in that case, completely separate case, right? These are completely separate, not overlapping groups of people, right? Either the adult wears a seatbelt or they don't. Right? So here's a group of people, here's a completely different group of people. Now there's only a 0.26 chance that the student does, does wear their belt. And which means there's a 0.74 chance that the student doesn't. What? 
that's not right at all. It's a lot of wrong. Okay. Well, these are completely different things. Right? In the group of people where the adult wears a seatbelt, that's one thing. In the group where the adult does not wear their seatbelt, it's a completely different thing. So if we ask the question, what's the probability that a student at random wears their seatbelt? on a regular basis. Kind of depends, right? Did I pick that from a group that, that the adult does wear the seatbelt or that doesn't wear their seatbelt? Right? So it could go either way. It could be that you pick somebody from here or from here. You could pick this person or you could pick this person. Okay. Well, there's a probability that an adult will wear their seatbelt. It's a 0.69 that they will and a 0.31 that they won't. So now we have some more information. There's, it's 0 0.69, right? 69 hundredths of people, 69% of people, adults, wear their seatbelts. And 66% of the students, of the, of the students who ride with those adults, wear their seatbelt, okay? So how big is this population? Well, it's 66% of 69%. How do we figure out how much that is? Multiply them together, what's 0.69 times 0.66? Still have a calculator, can you run that real quick for us? About if the adult doesn't wear their seatbelt and the student really uh, unlikely to wear their seatbelt, but there is a certain percentage of the entire population that wears their seatbelt, even though the adult doesn't, what would that be? 0.0. Okay, so there's this group that wears their seatbelt, there's this group that wears their seatbelt, all together they make up how much? Close to 50, if we add it together, right? So point five four three six. So you pick a random student, it's, they're 54% likely to be someone who wears their seatbelt according to this data. But we had to find what the total percentages were, or the probabilities, that uh, an adult who doesn't wear their seatbelt and the student does, right? That's two things in a row. Right? Let's get this, this sequential probability. And also this 69% likely to wear the seatbelt and 66% of that 69% will wear their seatbelts. And then we add them together. So we can add both of those things in one problem happening in sequence and also either or. There's a probability that the student wears a seatbelt uh, given that the adult doesn't, or the student wears a seatbelt given that the adult does wear a seatbelt. This is what you call a probability tree. You can set up these probabilities in a tree if you want to know the probability that uh, the student doesn't wear their seatbelt given that the adult does wear the seatbelt. You just multiply the branches together. And then you know there's a probability. That's all.